So, George, these are your amps, bro. Tell me about these particular amplifiers. Well, these are the de Havilland GM70 amplifier. Made right in California by de Havilland Electric Amplifier Company, which I started in, it was 1997. And, uh, I ran, I was too crazy. I was into buying vacuum tubes and old audio gear and taking it apart. And I was learning about, oh, stuff from like the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. I mean, I watched it how the whole world of electronics, consumer electronics, changed. You know, from open circuitry with bus bars to, you know, the beautiful architectural looking products we make today. So, this is it. GM70 amplifier GM70. designed by George Lozinski and Kara Chaffee, who I met at a tube association meeting in San Francisco. And we collaborated. Uh, me as uh, the owner of the company, the uh, industrial designer, and very involved in what parts we use because I had done a lot of research and the sound of different parts, such as Hovland music capacitors and oil capacitors and uh, all types of military test equipment and things like that. Uh, it was it was a sojourn. I mean, it, it's, it's an amazing world of electronics, the history of it. But this amplifier here is one of the best amp sounding amplifiers in the world, I think. That is my opinion. Well, I've heard it too. I it's, just, pure it's incredible. Class a, pure class A single class ended. A. And it's gorgeous. This it's gorgeous. You, uh, Look how pretty it is. 35 high fidelity power. It's just glowing. Up to 50 watts high fidelity power, depending how you rate the amplifier. Okay, but at a minimum, 35. And, uh, you know, it's just three tubes. The, the output tube is a Ulanov GM70 vacuum tube made in Russia. They used them in tanks. And you remember that MiG uh, fighter where the guy defected in Japan? He landed. And they looked at the radar of this fighter jet airplane from China that came from Russia, okay, a Russian MiG fighter jet, and they're using vacuum tubes for the radar. And this By thing, the way, how fast, you, is this thing going? How fast a, does that go, the fighter jet? How well, fast? The how fighter miles jet power? definitely goes Mach 1.8, and it could go up to Mach 3 as far as we know. And this sucker is using tube amps in there. Just for the radar. Wow. And I'll tell you why. USA fighter jets? Yeah. If there's a nuclear pulse in the air, nuclear, you know, explosion. Yeah. So what I have heard is that our jets will all go down from the, from the pulse. Whereas the tubes are unaffected. They continue working. So a lot of communications on the planet is still done using vacuum tubes because of their resilience, resilience to huh? a, a nuclear pulse. Well, and they have just, res that's incredible. Wow. How many people think about that, you know? That's I do, because that's the fascination of what's wow. going on here. Wow. These tubes have, have a history wow. to them. History. As a matter of fact, to use this as an audio tube... It has more than audio function. It has multiple... Well, it's multidimensional. It, it's, well, it's also know. used in Russian tanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They take two of them and operate them in Class B or Class C and get, you know, 150 to 300 watts. And that they, they did it for the same reason in the tanks. Now, don't we feel silly thinking that we have the best technology? Well, if it if it can be destroyed from a nuclear pulse, how is that better technology in the vacuum tube that would continue operating? Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean, Daniel? Oh, wow. At any rate, we, we had to design a special, very special uh, uh, socket, tube socket for this amplifier because the tube, tube sockets were not available. And the, and the ones we could get, we had we could modify one, but it didn't come out that good. So this is made with Teflon and pure copper. Pure copper, billet and copper, because Kara has a CNC machine. We had, had I worked a, on that with We have a that. house CNC machine, and you da know, Daniel, you worked for I us for there. a short time. I know. And you operated the CNC machine. What did you think about that? Well, I, John Vanaviter had his shops. I've worked at him right. for six months. And that was my, I, that's why I so could get So you did that there, there too. Well, yeah. I worked on that, you know. Well, it's a great. That was piece pretty of, it's cool, a man. Great piece of equipment. It's pretty badass. And uh, we had it, and yeah. Kara still has it yeah. at the Hamlet, where she's making the new her new amplifiers. Made in America. The That's Fisher what people say. A basically retro suck it to your baby amplifiers. Really? Right. These wow. are these are just like the 50 A's that. That were built way back when. The and real Kara deal. brought them back with all brand new parts and a redesign. Wow. And they sound fantastic. This thing, the GM70 does a lot of things right. There's some things it could do better. Well, the 50A, the uh, push pull amps, they do a lot of things right where this amp doesn't. They do it better. It's a trade-off, you know, it's still the de Havilland sound, which will put you in a very good place, okay? How do you feel about the architectural feeling of my amplifiers, Daniel? Well, I really like the architectural feel. You know, there's an archetypal aspect of it. Let's look at this, actually. Can we maybe look at it? Sure, go ahead. Come over here, my friend. Well, you got the all-seeing eye on there. Look at that. It's like totally the pyramid. You know what I mean? Look at that. There's, there's so look many, at it from the front. There are so many images you can make out of that. It's heavy, dude. It's very okay. it's archetypal. Get close up. We need. To, know, can we have some more look, light here? I'm saying the sound is architectural oh, there too. Is. Okay. Yeah, it's the sound it changes the feel, the architecture of the house, and the archetypal aspect. Look at that, man. You have it. So what are these things called that you have it sitting on? Uh, it's on a butcher block, a big butcher is. block surrounded by oak, and it's on spikes. The uh, and it's all wood. And the amplifiers, I just put wood. I took the bottom off so the amps can cool better, and I put uh, hardwood feet. <laughs> two two different types. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Sure. These speakers are the New Millennium Dinosaurs, uh, which Chris, Chris Betcher at the Randall Museum uh, got me started on, which was also in one of the enthusiast magazines. The efficiency on these speakers is an honest, not, at least 94 dB plus depending on how you look at it. Uh, transmission line using a Focal Audium driver for the mid-range, which is at its open back transmission line on the woofer and the tweeter. Open we, back we transmission the, line. We cut the magnet through so the diaphragm can play in both directions. 12 inch woofers, believe it or not, Pioneer HBM 100 cast frame 13 inch drivers that come out of the Pioneer HPM 100s in a transmission line. And I helped in the crossover design here. This is the crossover, believe it or not. A lot of people think it's the am an amplifier. Right there, Daniel, This the, the black and yellow and everything. The That's crossover. an outboard crossover and it's sitting on ball bearings. So that uh, if it moves, just like the, the, the speaker here is on ball bearings, it's vibration control. 
Yeah. Just the, I'd like you mention that the stands before, okay, we have the the stands for the uh, the speakers, which is solid wood with oak around it. I had it planed at the Randall Museum. Wow. Where wow. Chris Betcher helped me a lot there also. But I, we made it flat and uh, I learned from uh, from Mr. Marchesito at uh, NOLA, which used to be Elan Speakers, a fabulous speaker designer, fabulous speakers. Great guy, know him and his wife. We did shows together. Uh, very good people. And uh, we had made great sound together. You know, we had some very enthusiastic reviewers uh, come and uh, write beautiful things about us. About We were like either the best or one of the best sounding sounds at the show. So we really appreciate that from all of them. And thank you very much. It was much appreciated. Very much so. And uh, I'm continuing in my quest in audio as well as video. And playing music, uh, both guitar and bass guitar. Yeah, I do a little tambourine, and I do the bells. The tambourine. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, sing a song for me. I'm going to play.